we are very happy to um, initiate uh, this, uh, this three, four coming hours on the purpose on the injectable cadaver workshop. And I think this is the most unique educational activity actually that IMCAS Congress launched in the last year. for this uh, very, very nice congress and big congress and I'm happy to be here with you. So we are ready for the dissection. This lady is bothered by her mid face, her lower lids, and uh, she has uh, a slight asymmetry between her left and right temple area. As you can see, she has a nice temple, right temple area and going to inject right here on the bone and this will have two effects. It will, it will give her some uh, uh, anesthesia, but at the same time, I will be lifting the frontalis muscle from the bone. So I entered on top of the deep temporalis fascia. In other words, I am between the deep and the superficial temporalis fascia. I am injecting local anesthetic. I don't use flexible cannulas. They are dangerous here because I, I need to know exactly where I am. So I am using a long, non-flexible 22G cannula. In this area, from the bone to the lateral part, you see we are mm -hmm. under the fascia temporalis superficialis, the superficial fascia. Mm -hmm. So he injected, you know, yes. in the classical surgical plane that you can find, you know, you see, under the, the fascia. And here, here is my cannula, you can see it. It's underneath the superficial fascia, underneath the veins, underneath the uh, frontalis uh, nerve. Now I am going to connect m the syringe to the cannula. And this non-dominant hand is very important in order to follow the path of my, the cannula. In my opinion, sometimes it could be dangerous if you, you cross like this, look, the plane. But if you stay near the aponeurosis of the temporalis muscle, it, it could be a good way to inject it like he did. Here I am against the bone. And also this is a critical area because we know that there is the zygomaticofacial uh, bundle coming out with its artery. First injection with the needle near the bone and then you introduce your cannula. We'll focus uh, first on the forehead and then on the mid face and uh, I'm, I'm waiting to see Dr. Casuto's injections to try and, try and mimic them and to show the pertinent anatomy. Hello. Um, as you, we have a 46 year old lady She's a smoker, she's, she does a lot of physical activity, so you see she's lean. Uh, she's lost volume physiologically according to her age. I'm going through the hole that I've already done, and this patient is quite skinny. Are you going to touch the periostom or no. are you going to stay I'm on the hypodermis? I'm staying subcutaneously. All I have to do is stick a needle in a parallel way instead of the vertical way which is maybe described in all the studies but in my humble very humble opinion is very unsafe because you have no control of depth now there is no way I'm going to inject in the wrong place and also I'm going to spare the frontalis fibers that we always hit when we inject this way here's the frontalis muscle interestingly the nerves which are sensory pierce the corrugator and then higher up on the forehead pierce the frontalis and run on its superficial surface. So the sensory nerves run on the superficial surface of the frontalis, giving sensory innervation to the entire scalp. And the corrugator comes just as this, and it is an obliquely oriented muscle. So if we take the puncture and we put the cannula in this way. Yes. Um, and, then, and then we peel back the skin. We are typically deep to the male or fat pad, deep to the orbicularis muscle, so I'm, I'm, I'm deep to the souf in this area. You see this platysmal bands becomes very, very visible. And I'm going to inject her with Bocoture, which is botulinum toxin type A. 
and I hold it and I inject quite deeply and I'm looking on my scale and I inject 0 0.5, uh, 0.1 ml, which is equivalent to 10 units of Boca Chul. I'm going deep, I'm trying to be on the bone and I'm just dis dissecting before placing my fear, I'm just dis dissecting this area. The cannula is deep to the muscles and there are three important muscles here. Midline, there is the mentalis, just lateral to it is a triangular depressor labii inferioris, and then more laterally than that, shown right here, is the depressor anguli oris. And I'm now under the mentalis muscle because I want to correct this contracture of the chin. And I will inject directly into the muscle in a few spots, as Marina sh showed. The depressor is right here, and the platysma comes in this fat layer just superficial to it. Very glad to be with you to discuss with this patient uh, we, who has a lot of uh, very interesting points to assess. And I put two units on one side and two units on the other side. So you can uh, just feel where the mandible here and inject quite deeply, almost uh, on the bone. Two to four units, depending of uh, how strong is the muscle. And I put every time 0 0.1 cc, which is quite few. My first injection would be a spreading injection here in the commissure. And I want to uh, inject the superior and the inferior aspect of the commissure. So I will uh, make a retro with rowing technique. This patient didn't receive any uh, preparation with uh, lidocaine before, so uh, as you see, the adding lidocaine to feeders really make the session very, very more comfortable. You see all the depressor, the depressor labi inferioris, you see the DAO, and all around the lip, the orbicularis muscle. I'm just going to complete the right side of the superior lip on the submucous and the submucous aspect of the lip. I will not add more. You see now in blue is the jaw. The jaw is something you couldn't treat by the filler. With a good cover of the marionette line, we could make a, sit, a certain degree of dissimulation of the jaw. And on the posterior part, it's, it's quite important to add some hyaluronic acid. Point. You are just, okay. just below the mandible at the junction of the border of the platysma muscle, which is inserting on the mandible here. Okay. I prefer to stay uh, close to the hypodermis, the lower part of the hypodermis. As so you can I see, I can mobilize a little bit the tissue. It's just to mention that I'm not exactly on the layer of the periostome. We are now going on the hands, but I would like to stress the dangers. I think that everybody knows okay. quite well the anatomy of the hands. So there are three dangers that we have to know when injecting the hands. The first one is represented by the veins. Danger number two is represented by the small nerves. And the third danger would be to go inside and to inject in this interosseous muscles, and it can go to an atrophy of the interosseous muscles. And I like, you know, to make a fan technique. Uh, quite easy uh, with a sort of uh, thin wall cannula. Mm -hmm.